Movie Junkies, welcome back to Twin Flicks, where we always here celebrating the magic of movies and most importantly, physical media with you. Now, if you saw my last uh, video of uh, my 4K versus Blu-ray comparison of Heavy Metal, uh, then you know that that kicked off a, I'm going to call it my animated comparison trilogy. And if you haven't checked that out yet, the link will be at the end of this video. Uh, and then after this video, I'm going to be comparing the 4K USD and Blu-ray to Akira. And there was some trouble with this disc where Funimation ended up not sending out uh, versions with HDR. Instead, they only sent it out with SDR. It was a big thing, and they did send out replacement discs. But still, I get messages. This happened last year, and I still get messages today asking me, do I have the right version? Do I have the one with the HDR? So I'm going to talk about that and let you know how you can tell if you have the HDR version in that video. And also so a couple of new ones I have coming up. And that is a 4K uh, Blu-ray comparison of Carrie and a 4K versus Blu-ray comparison of Black Christmas. So the best way to keep up with all these new comparison reviews coming up is by being a subscriber. And also remember when you do so, hit that notification bell to be notified when all the new videos drop. But today we're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite anime films, and that is Ghost in the Shell. And comes at us from Lionsgate with a new 4K restoration from the original 35mm negative, forming a native 4K DI with the added benefits of HDR10+, and Dolby Vision grading. A lot of people didn't like it. There was a lot of controversy with it, with a lot of people saying it's one of the worst UHD releases out there. Lionsgate did a really bad, terrible job with this UHD while I also saw others praise the UHD. So this is going to be an interesting comparison. Is I have uh, the previously released Blu-ray, which is Ghost in the Shell 2.0, that did have some major uh, image improvements. And uh, yeah, we're going to so let's check out to see if there's much improvements or any at all or how bad this actually looks between the 4K and the Blu-ray. And as usual, I have screenshots to compare the differences for yourself. So let's get to it. So with all the different 50-50 reviews out there, I was really curious how well or how much improvement this was to the previous Blu-ray. And honestly, when I watched it, I have no idea what these people are talking about or what movie they're watching because this is a clear upgrade from the previous Blu-ray. I mean, the results are obvious, but I did find some minor issues that I will bring up later in this review. First of all, the image is brighter, cleaner, and best of all, much more stable than the Blu-ray ever was. Color reproduction is excellent, from spectacular highlights that has a crisper glow to the colors, uh, to primary colors that abound and ignite the screen with a lot of pop to it. The HDR Dolby Vision grading enhances the entire image, opening up a much wider color gamut, giving way to bolder, richer, more vibrant colors, especially the steely cobalt uh, blues of night scenes, and in the abandoned building at the end with reds of flashing lights, are richer crimson cherry reds, all the reds are. The saturation is perfectly rendered, such as with the peachy pink faces of different characters and other colors ranging from lavender, violet, or magenta tones in other areas that just looks beautiful. There are also much deeper, inkier blacks and silky shadows that penetrate deep into the image without any crushing or edge enhancements at all. Unlike the Blu-ray that had a lot of crushing and bleeding and also some edge enhancements. The image now has a great deal of depth, filling in the frame with dimensionality and spacing that's superior over the Blu-ray. I was just constantly in awe over the amount of depth there was to the image. The overall definition has major improvements, showing cleaner, distinct lines in the frame. The details are razor sharp, making lettering on signs and buildings now clearly readable and visible. The gory action sequences are striking with incredible amount of detail to them. Now, one thing I've heard from some people complaining about is the image looks very soft with the visuals. But after doing some research, this was not a problem with the transfer. Instead, it was intentionally photographed with a softer lens to hide some of the weaker and rougher imperfections of, of the visuals and animation. So again, this was intended. This is baked into the negative, and it is not a problem with the transfer. 
Now, I've been a fan of the movie, and I've owned every home media release of Ghost in a Shell, and I've honestly never seen the film look this beautiful and eye-catching before. This is just a stunning 4K UHD presentation, and I have no clue what version or movie these people are watching that are complaining about the 4K UHD, because this looks outstanding. The audio also got a nice uh, facelift with a Dolby Atmos mix that penetrates every channel with higher dynamic range and spaciousness, from the music cues to the sound effects. The percussion section swells with activity, hearing all the bells ringing across the entire soundstage and the choir echo all around the listening area during those music cues. There's also some really nice height activity with, with the music. The various sound effects flawlessly pan from the fronts to the sides to the rears up above, such as when the helicopters are flying overhead or water dripping from uh, the ceiling. You can hear it literally going above you down to the surround speakers. It just sounds very lifelike. The height channels also gives extra depth to the audio that becomes a very immersive sounding experience. But the biggest problem I did find with this Almost Mix is that the bass, the low ends really lacks. That oomph, that, that rumbling you want from this mix. But the low ends still do give enough bass to provide explosions and gunfire some heft and weight to it. Dialogue is rendered crystal clear and crisp and fixed in the center with music and sound effects never drowning out any part of the dialogue. So my score for Lionsgate 4K UHD presentation of Ghost in a Shell is for the video and audio a 5 out of a 5. This is a stellar 4K UHD release and again, I'm not sure what TV these people are watching it on or what version they're watching, but I did not see any of the problems or any of the complaints that these people were talking about, especially when comparing it to the previously Blu-ray. This looks outstanding. But head over to the comment section. I'm really interested in your opinion here because when you compare the differences here between the previously released Blu-ray and the new 4K UHD, which format do you think looks better? Or do you see any comparison at all? Again, head over to the comment section and let me know. And to round out our anime 4K comparison uh, trilogy, next up, stay tuned for Akira 4K UHD versus Blu-ray. And as always, keep doing your part in keeping physical media alive, and I'll see you next time.